All right, here we are, the Great War Redox, one of my favorite mods. Don't worry, we're still going to be doing disaster saves. I'm just waiting for a really good one to pop up, so never fear. Send yours in today, it might just be the one. But today we play the Empire of China. The Great Qing in the Great War Redox is perhaps one of the most challenging starts I've played to date. Now, I think I can win, but I'm not sure, so let's find out. The Great Qing, they're recommending me not to play on Iron Man. To that I say balls, sir. And with historical AI focuses on, let us get cracking. Mighty, mighty China. Zero civilian factories. We do have a couple of military factories. Two research slots. Not a whole lot of stuff researched though. Focuses. We got a focus tree. That's something. It feels a bit small though. Yeah, I think I may have picked one of those countries that doesn't really have a big focus tree because you're not supposed to survive. Oh well. I'm gonna start making guns. This army, not very well equipped. And we're gonna need more men because we will face a very large uprising starting in Wuchang, the province of Hubei. And it is going to spread through pretty much all of southern China. And 31 divisions, just not enough to hold the line. Not only that, but the Mongolians are going to rise up against us. And I don't need another Genghis Khan on my border. So we'll need to deal with him as well. And to deal with everything else, just as many infantry divisions as we can. I want high priority given the divisions I'll be recruiting first. I know that it's better to have a few well-equipped divisions than to have many poorly equipped ones. But I need boys for the line. That's, I, I just need men on the front lines because if we don't cover the front, we'll die anyway. Research-wise, support equipment and yeah, production, I guess, so we keep these factories pumping. And I just noticed these are outdated guns, so I'll just put five on the outdated guns and we'll add any new factories making the new guns. So we'll make use of the efficiency of these guns to the, well, not maximum effect, but to a good effect, and then start making some actual decent guns as well. Well, there's a couple of things we can do. I want to start fixing some of these things. They are terrible. And this is the one I want to focus on. The payment of indemnities. And if I rush through this branch of the focus tree, I think I can get most of these done. So that is what I will try for. Now, for anyone wondering why this is such a difficult start. Well, while I'm organizing the army, let me tell you about the Xinghai Revolution that brought down the Qing Empire. Starting in the province of Hubei, it has quickly or will quickly spread throughout southern China and historically did not go very very well for the Qing, but we will do better, or at least we'll try. And this isn't the only place Japan is poised to take on the East. This video is sponsored by March of Empires, and the Japanese Shogunate has just been added as the newest playable faction. March of Empires is free to play on Android, iOS, Windows, and Steam, and it allows you to take on the role of a great leader, and together with teammates, you vie for control of the map. Using both your military might and your diplomatic cunning, you will need to cleverly maneuver your way to a position of power and who knows, total domination. Explore the map, build your castle and train your troops, and maybe you will reign supreme. Tactical unit positioning will help you take control of the battlefield and destroy the enemy. With the addition of the Japanese Shogunate, there is now a list of four playable factions, the Mighty Kings, the Fierce Sultans, the Powerful Tsar, and of course, the Shogunate of Japan. This strategy-oriented empire building has just received its biggest update in 7 years and to celebrate, my viewers will get 5,000 gold and other goodies to help kickstart their campaign. Download for free using my link down below or scan the QR code on screen. Help out yourself while helping out the channel. Now what I've done here is draw a bit of a fallback line that looks really, really weird. But trust me, this is going to give us the best chance of survival. It bypasses or excludes the provinces that will rise up against us and gives us the best possible defensive terrain to fight off the Xinghai Revolution. I could potentially try to link up with Nanjing as well, but not sure if I'll have enough troops for that. Because the reason I've drawn it like this is to include as many of these supply hubs as I can within my own defensive ground, because if you don't have a supply hub, you have nothing. And of course, you 
starve, you cannot effectively defend without supply. So I try to include as many of these supply hubs as possible while excluding the provinces that will rise up against us. I'm building railways because there are several supply hubs not connected, like this one in Tibet. And pretty much everything in Manchuria is disconnected from the supply network. I don't know why. It's kind of stupid. So I'm trying to build those first, assuming I ever get factories. Going to try something by including Nanjing as well. Because if I can hold Nanjing, I'll hold a lot of victory points. All right, and we'll also recruit a bit of cavalry under the command of the king or the emperor's brother or cousin, whatever. Time to pave the way for industrialization. And then I will grab southern industrialization, central industrialization, and probably Manchurian industrialization as well as the factories in the south and the center. Manchurian factories can wait because I know I will hold on to Manchuria and I can do that focus at a later date. I just need to rush these two before the areas rise up. After that, I think we'll go with the uh, arsenals, or maybe appease some colonials. I still like dispersed more than concentrated. Do I want construction? No, I'll get radios instead first so we can get some good reinforce rates. The front line is getting filled out, so I think two Two full armies should do. I won't need to recruit all of these. And then I can start focusing on getting some guns into the hands of these soldiers. I'm going to exercise the horses a little because I, I need them to be better than green. I will use them to uh, exclusively fight the Mongols in the north. Yes, they will be there. The rest of the army I would like to exercise so they're no longer green, but that would cost me so many guns and would significantly hurt the amount of guns I have by the time the revolution gets here. I think that would be a bad idea. So now we wait, we industrialize, we try to make some friends maybe because I would like to appease the colonialists that would get me some help from the British, the Japanese and the Germans. Ironic that the Japanese would be willing to help me. And you can tell as we're doing these industrialization programs, areas will have a lot more infrastructure so we can build there quicker. The south and center are mostly a lost cause for now, so we won't focus our construction there. We will get the Manchurian boost soon and we will hold on to Manchuria for a while, so they will get a nice little bonus. But for now, we will focus our construction in the areas around Beijing. Shangxi has a nice infrastructure boost. So does Gansu, but we'll, we'll focus on the areas close to the Imperial Heartland. Beijing, Chengde. These boys are going to need a lot more guns. Ah, there we go. The second Huangzhou uprising. This is where it starts. In 70 days, the Wuchang uprising will start in the province of Hubei, and we will be in for a world of hurt. 70 more days and China fractures. I'll also start getting the cavalry into position. Now, I do know the province of Outer Mongolia breaks away along with Tanutuva up there. I'll just move my cavalry into some sort of position where they might be able to intercept or at least maneuver in such a way as to stop the problem. A three, two, one. There we go. The country shatters. The Xinhai Revolution. This is where we choose to play as either the Republic of China or the Empire of the Great Qing. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We take the hard path because it's fun to suffer. You will play as Qing. Okay, so we've got the uprising here under Li Huanghong. It doesn't look like much, but trust me, this is going to expand exponentially. So there's going to be a lot more trouble here. And to their north, the Mongolians have decided to break away along with the Tuvans. We'll see what we can do here. I'm going to destroy this front line and I'm going to try and maneuver to encircle these cavalry units here, keep them pinned as long as possible. And hopefully we'll be able to create some encirclements and destroy some units. The Mongols don't really have that many divisions as long as far as I can remember. Yeah, four to nine. Realistically, it's it's more like five or six. So if I can destroy these and I can start pushing into their heartland, they really shouldn't be much of a problem. I don't need to cover this entire front. These guys have a lot of troops. They're well equipped and they have a large stockpile of equipment. So eventually it's not unlikely for them to, uh, well, almost overrun us. So let's go ahead and take some defensive ground in the area. Make sure we hold on to our supply hubs. Make sure we hold on to a front line that is strong. I have the, uh, oh yeah, pin that guy in place until my unit arrives. There we go. And I'll go there. Now, 
I am going to go without a fallback line for now until I can see where the front line stabilizes. At least this way, I'll be able to micromanage the defense somewhat. As you can tell, their units have full equipment. Fortunately, they are also trash in terms of their division composition, and there's just not a whole lot of them. Now, I could go with fight against famine, get myself a little bit of stability, but I don't think it's going to matter. Yeah, this stain is going to quickly spread. Other provinces, like, there we go. <laughs> like I said, other provinces are also going to break away and it is going to be quite, quite terrible. The Mongols are already losing and losing badly. I'm going to try and maneuver my cavalry around to see if I can't uh, hurt them a little bit more. The encirclement is what I'm going for here. I want these boys completely encircled, destroy the cavalry on one side of the encirclement and then move ahead, take more land, destroy these units, capitulate the Mongols, hopefully capitulate the Tuvans as well. When they're all wiped out, I can either move these 10 divisions south to help the defense or delete them so the guns get distributed along the other units. Don't know which is going to be the best approach. Micromanaging this defense is what I'll be doing for the rest of this campaign, or at least for the foreseeable future. I'm very happy I built this railway towards Lhasa, because otherwise this entire section of the line would have zero supply. Mongol horsemen have been encircled. Now we're going to try and destroy them here. If I can destroy them here, that makes this next bit so much easier. Once those two are gone, whoa, three are gone. That's like 50% of the Mongol army destroyed. And they just probably wipe out the rest with the battle plan. Won't have to worry about the north. If the north is secure, I can focus all of my attention on the Chinese Revolutionary Alliance. In terms of units, I think they have a little less than us, but we have more of an industry. And if I look at the factories, and this is why we'll win this campaign, they have a lot of civilian factories because we did the focuses for Southern and Central China. So they have those civvies, but they only have one military factory. At the same time, we still have seven. We should, in theory, be able to outproduce our losses while they will not. Unfortunately, the Republic of China, like they've changed tags three times. <laughs> the Republic of China um, has a large stockpile from the events that create this whole mess. So they will take a while to take real attrition. But until then, we simply micro the defense and we hold, we hold, we hold. All right, I think they've pushed up to our front line pretty much everywhere. So let us, oops, what did I do? Oops, that was wrong. Ah, I think I've lost a unit. Yeah, a unit's been destroyed somehow. Did I get encircled somewhere? No, I think it just flipped to the other side. Oh, well, I think this is about the farthest I want to let the Republicans push, so I'm going to get the front line back up and running. I really wish this northern section would collapse a little bit sooner because this is annoying. And the north here, I just wish these boys had some supply. That is the main reason this is dragging on. There's no supply up there. Okay, Prince Ching cabinet. Great. Somebody died. Ah, oh, yes, this man has been replaced. Either he's been replaced or he just got real old real fast. At least this guy has a good trait. Political power is pretty nice. And now we protect the Ching dynasty. Ooh, that's not going to get us enough war support, is it? No, but I can get war support by getting war propaganda. Oh, the force attacks are annoying, but eventually they will have to stop. They cannot keep this up indefinitely. And as long as I can keep shuffling troops around, I will be able to survive. I'm going to be on the edge of my seat for most of this campaign, but I will be able to survive. We have taken the Mongol capital. Yay. And technically, I could build a railroad here now to to plug into my own network and maybe that will allow me to have some supply in the region. All right, protect the Qing, done. War support at 28. That is enough to go to partial mobilization. That should free up, yeah, a couple of factories. The rest of this tree is locked until we win. I have no use for the Navy. Army modernization would be nice, but these are mostly research bonuses and we are way ahead of time still. So I don't think the small research bonus is gonna be worth it. Instead, let's see if we can get some colonialists appeased or first build some military factories. Yeah, a couple of mills wouldn't be terrible because I am still short a lot of guns. The attacks are honestly quite brutal. It is painful, but we are holding for now. Just a consistent shuffling of troops. That is what's going to keep us alive here. Troops and the production of vast amounts of infantry equipment. I'm slowly shifting around from basic infantry to infantry equipment one. As the top bar fills out with production efficiency, I remove a factory from the basic infantry equipment. I know it's going to reduce my overall equipment production, but what I'll be making will actually be decent, air quotes. I hope it will cancel out. The north here, we're almost 
almost done if I can just get these damn horses destroyed. We did get the railway built. It hasn't helped as much as I would have liked, but it will allow us to continue a little bit of an offensive operation. I just need to get the Mongols out, and that will allow me to purely focus on the Republicans. Huh. The Tuvans have become a Russian puppet. Well, at least I don't have to fight them, I guess. It's a little unfortunate that I lose the land, but... Eh, beats having to fight him. I'll just try and focus on taking out the Mongolians. So far, my situation is not quite desperate, but it is painful. Oh, that is one problem solved. Do I want to occupy it or do I... Nah, let's just take all of it. Whew, that is a relief. Okay, so with that done, I have 10 divisions now freed up and I'm going to use those 10 divisions to make a bit of a mess down south here. I want to attack there and I'll take another five and you go there and we'll try and make some sort of pincer to encircle this northern section. We'll see how well that goes. Now, alternatively, I could get rid of these 10 divisions and get their equipment distributed along the line, but I think we're okay. Oh, there goes Emperor Meiji. Bye-bye. But I think we're okay. We're still 11, almost 12,000 guns short, but the deficit is shrinking and I am doing okay. The line is holding. Let's call for some German help. And as long as I can keep shuffling troops in and out of combat, there is almost nothing there I can do to stop me. All right, the cavalry is in position. Let us embark on a grand campaign of snaking around. They have nothing here. W what is this? Where is your operational reserves? W where is your anything, really? Uh, so begins our glorious counterattack. Troops are about to link up. I might, even, I might even be able to take Chongqing. Okay, so we've already taken Chongqing. We've cut off a small section of the enemy line. Guess I'll use the cavalry to try and close that section, along with an infantry assault. And as soon as we crush that, we can move on. So this is actually a little bit risky, but we have to take the risk. We have to take the risk. We cannot afford to just sit around all day now. Encirclements galore. That's one, two, three, four, five enemy divisions encircled. And they only have at most 34. So that is a significant portion of the enemy army. Completely surrounded, ready to be destroyed. Their losses are not very high, but remember this is not World War II level equipment we're fighting with. Yeah, the problem is we're just just don't have any stats. Oh, these divisions suck. And with my cavalry freed up, I'm going to try to make a run down here towards French Indochina. See if I can cut off the far west of the Republic of China's forces. Create another encirclement. The cavalry should be fast enough to outpace any infantry they redeploy. And it does look like we're almost done with these pockets. So close. Looks like the Republic of China's forces are getting a little desperate. They're launching attacks. But even if we lose these positions in the east now, we're not at risk of capitulating by a long shot and we should be fine. I do think they changed this from previous versions because I distinctly remember holding this river line in the north and then just the province of Nanjing. And that would be barely enough not to capitulate as Qing China. So this has been made significantly easier. I could be wrong, but I remember this being a lot more difficult in the past. That said, it's still not a cakewalk. And if it wasn't for the fact that my units were absolute garbage, I would do this even faster. We got virtually no soft attack on these boys, which is unfortunate, but they're all still doing a very good job nonetheless. Oh, meanwhile, focuses. I finished the German branch. I could go get a research slot. That would be very helpful. Or I could work on the Japanese and British branch first. I still want to fix the boxer protocol, but it's not as horrible as it used to be. It's still terrible. Not as terrible. I can't fix this until later, I think. And then low legitimacy. Yeah, also need to finish the civil war first. I'm thinking maybe grab some stability here and then get the research slot. No, let's just get the research slot, grab some stability and then see if we can do the rest of the tree. A lone infantry division has pushed all the way into Wuchang. Yeah, I would not want to be Republican China's high command right now. Having to explain how you're losing this war, considering most of my army did not even have guns at the start of this campaign. Couple more victory points and 
there we go. The end of the Xinhai Revolution. The Qing Dynasty stands triumphant. A new era for China. The Great Qing stand. And unfortunately, we have a bunch of new debuffs. Recovery after the revolution for the next two years. Our country's going to be shit. Army corruption. Apparently, our army is corrupt and has no will to fight despite just winning a major war. Well, major a war. Hyperinflation, because of course our economy is in the gutter and the others are as we see before. Our country just somehow got worse. But we do have access to these trees. So I'm figuring we'll get the research slot here. I'll get some stability here. And then I'm going to work my way down, restore the nation towards United China. Yeah, I'm supposed to be hiring Lian Chi. Chao or whatever for his stability or bad things will happen but I can't hire him yet so I'll keep an eye on that I do wonder what more bad things could happen to the great Qing at this point we've won we've crushed the Republicans ah crap they want me to demobilize the economy but I don't want to the only way to get that is to get war support up so I need world tension to go up or to go into this tree here and grab reform ministries or the other one might have enough time to grab that yeah I do not want to demobilize. In fact, I'm going to do the opposite and I am going to mobilize. I'm going to train a lot more divisions, a lot more divisions. The Chinese army must grow larger if we are to influence the outcome of this war. If we're going to fight the Entente, we will be surrounded and we will need all the strength we can get. Hurrah, debt paid off. Let's reform the Qing more. So we've got the economic debuff of hyperinflation down to a minimum and it should go away soon enough. So this is fine. Restore the nation helping us out recovery there's nothing i can do about this this has to take away on its own so it is what it is army corruption is still very very bad and i'll need to go through this path but i won't do that until i'm ready to go to war so i'm gonna pick up as many other bonuses first before i clean that up i think it's just better to have the economy take off before anything else yeah the economy is not in the great state so i want to want to make sure that gets repaired first ah yeah that's not going to go well let us divert more attention to the military then We're recruiting more men we will be ready to influence the outcome of that conflict soon i'll need more howitzers more artillery more of everything really if we are to uh, <clears throat> have a party uh, i'm going to recruit a couple more boys going to make sure everybody's in position because i need boys on the border with raj with france probably japan and then the massive russian border so let's see if there's any supply hubs here i'm gonna have to build my own aren't i the war to end all wars has started if only they knew if only they knew i don't think i want to join any fighting until i fix my army corruption though so that might have to wait now i'm gonna be a chad i'm gonna send germany 10 percent of my production to help them out i need germany to stay in this I need to buy time so i can get involved and really turn the tide the fate of the Beiyang army we are about to purge and subdue a very powerful foe, an internal foe. For those of you who don't really understand how important dealing with the Beiyang army is historically and in the game, within China at the time, there was only one. One army with modern weapons, modern training, and capable officers. These were the only real military power in all of China. Everybody else used weak militia or troops of very, very inferior quality, even if they had a lot of them. And this was the only actual modern military force. And as such, their commanders had a lot of clout. And we are about to remove that clout. We either compromise with them, bring them in line, and as a result, the emperor is going to lose face. Or we do the most imperial of all. We execute them, all of them. But we need to have have over 85% stability and the highest legitimacy or the warlords will break the army in well that they'll just completely destroy the army they will completely destroy the nation and we enter the warlord period we have 85 percent stability i don't know if this counts as having over 85 percent sure as hell hope so because i don't think i can get more oh god maybe i should have done worker conditions oh god and maybe i should have done improved worker conditions well it's too late for that i am not compromising so we will execute them and hope the country doesn't Shatter. We have 85% stability and we do have the highest legitimacy. We hold the mandate of heaven. So please, 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 please. Peng Shi Kai just got shot. This is not off to a good start. Let's grab a little bit of stability here. 
but it does seem like we are still in one piece. I think we're good. I think we're actually good. Yeah, I'm not seeing any major negative events. Well, meanwhile, I am going to keep recruiting more men. I'm going to stack up on the Russian border. I need to man the border with the uh, Raj as well. And then the French here. And I will try and get into a fight with the um, Entente. I will help my German friends in any way, shape or form I can. I am going to cancel the lend lease for a bit. Sorry, Wilhelm. I need the guns myself because I will need a lot of boys for what I'm about to do. First, of course, I need to finish all the military reorganization to really get rid of the army corruption. Once that's done. Oh my God, this lasts for two years. Well, that's going to suck. But I think we can take the Russians if they have their backs turned to us. I could always justify on Tanatuva as well for a claimed state. Only lasts 18 days. So I think that's going to be my ticket into the war. While I'm waiting to get ready, I'm quickly going to improve my relations with the British as well. So I can quickly take the Japanese manufacturer, which I can, and then the British manufacturer. The reason I'm doing it now quickly is because I need a positive opinion from all of those countries. If I have the British and the Japanese, I can quickly take these two focuses and they unlock the entire tree. I don't need the uh, support or the diplomatic relations after I get the first focus in the branch so I can get all of these other things at a later date. And that still allows me to fix my boxer protocol. Things are looking a bit dicey for my future friends here. The Russians seem to have made a breakthrough at my no, no, things are still very much in flux, but I, I definitely want to get involved sooner rather than later. If we can take the Russian Empire from two sides and I can tie down a lot of allied divisions in the east, that would be amazing. Are you shitting me? Really? 1915, the Great War is over? No way. No way. Wow. Okay, so that's a massive anticlimax. I was just building up my troops to get involved. Oh, uh, that's gonna... <sighs> We've just finished the army branch as well. So yeah, there's the peace deal and the Treaty of Versailles is going to come in next. Oh, the central powers really got their asses kicked quickly as well. Here I am sitting on the sidelines with a relatively large army and I've done nothing. Literally nothing. Oh, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. We'll see what the outcome of the peace deal is, but I think, yeah, there goes the high seas fleet. There goes the Weimar Republic. I think anyone who's read a history book knows what this is going to turn into. I'm sorry to have to end this on such a well, anti-climax, really, because we weren't able to get ready in time to really influence the war. But yeah, if you want to see me play some more Great War Redux, let me know down in the comments. And if you have any other suggestions for a mod, again, let me know in the comments. And I'll leave a link down below if you want to send me some of your disaster saves as well. If nothing else, though, today we saved the Great Ching from collapse. So at least we have that going for us. We have a functional economy. We have some military production. We have a sizable army of a respectable size. I'd say we won, but I wish we could have had a little bit more involvement here. Anyway, hope you guys have a great day. Bye.